Hello, it's Martin from Wisely Automotive and a bit of an early start today because I have a challenge to complete with the Maxus E-Delivery 3, our favorite electric van. It was charging overnight from our Hypervolt so it should be fully brimmed. I do reckon I will need every last drop of range and if we look at the back we have got a lot of BMW i3 Michelin tires here. I've put the first destination into the sat-nav and it's not looking great. I definitely have a busy day ahead so enough talking and I will explain to you everything along the route. It's exactly 8.30 and I'm officially departing. The trip computer has been reset and the van is showing over 140 miles on a full charge. So that's not bad to begin with. Obviously so far I don't really need any heating. I'm leaving my jacket on. But let's address why we are doing the deliveries this way in the first place. As you probably know, if you've been following us for a while, we do supply Michelin BMW i3 tires. And normally we ship those orders out as they come in using DHL. The problem is that lately Michelin had issues with production and the numbers are very irregular. So sometimes there is no supply available at all for months on end. But next thing you know, you can buy an entire batch. And that's what we have done now. And we had a lot of orders come in. So if we plot those on the map, you can see that there is one in Manchester. That's too far away to try to do a loop in a day. So let's disregard that one. We also had a couple on the south coast. And while I think it's doable to drop off all of those tires in one day, you have to keep in mind some of these addresses are businesses. So we need to catch them at a reasonable time. Now we can't rock in at 9 p.m. on a Friday and expect someone to be there. So we will ship those using DHL as well. That costs us £24 for the shipping itself and about a pound for the packaging materials, which leaves me with six deliveries to do north and west of London. That sounds reasonable. It is above 200 miles, so I will definitely need to charge at least once, maybe two times en route. But let's see whether I can beat DHL at their own game. So £25 multiplied by six, I will try to stick under 150 pounds for everything that means the electricity already in the battery charging on route any toll roads and obviously any snacks as well in fact i'll probably get package very soon because i didn't have breakfast we will also see how the maxis handles when it's really kind of pushed to the limit because i think the problem will be not necessarily range but time because if you look i'm trying to do 21 miles but because of london traffic that will take me about an hour and six minutes so yeah i will sit back put on the car dealer magazine podcast and i will catch up with you at the first drop off i slowly battle through london traffic however as soon as i get onto the a3 out of central london it frees up and i can finally reach the posted speed limit first stop nice and easy it's the cross climate so the same dimension all around only have one set of these off onto the next one now and even though it feels like i've been driving for an eternity the van is still very happy showing 128 miles of range at 89 percent state of charge it's also complaining about slightly low tire pressures they were pumped up yesterday but obviously it was sitting outside overnight so the temperature has probably dropped no big deal i may give it a quick top up at motorway services where possible i will try to stick to the national speed limit no hyper miling so far i've just been using the heated seat which is quite aggressive on these maxes to keep warm but given i've been just sitting here my feet are getting a bit cold as well so i will give myself a little bit of cabin heating as well by the way any of the squeaking and rattling you hear that's just the tires rubbing against the walls of the van in the cargo bay but back to the topic of the heater, it's quite aggressive. This is an area where I do have one complaint about the Maxxis. It's all manual heating and it's a bit bizarre because you do have electronic control of which air vents the air is coming out of, but there is no way to set the strength of the heat or the air con or just set the target temperature. So you always have to kind of fiddle with it to maintain a comfortable cabin environment because right now, for example, it has literally been on for 30 seconds and I'm already too warm. So yeah, that can be switched off now. I will have to keep doing that the entire journey. Such a first world problem. Officially joined the M3, just sitting at 70 miles per hour for the next hour or so.
Second drop off complete, I'm literally in the middle of nowhere somewhere by Newbury, but the van is still showing 71 miles left and exactly 50% in the battery. So that's really strong considering I've already covered 81 miles, but I'm already starting to get hungry and obviously I need to plan my charging stop because the next drop off is all the way near Milton Keynes. So let's take a look at that map. Obviously there's plenty of opportunities at Newbury, but that's a bit too early. Let me do Fair Acres Retail Park. There seems to be plenty of shops and if I plug it into Apple Maps, that's about 28 miles away. I've got 71 miles of range. Don't need to worry about anything. So let me plug my phone in for CarPlay and get going. Honestly, having CarPlay is such a lovely feature because even though of course you can get by without it with your phone holder on the windscreen or anything like that but it makes life a lot easier when it's nicely integrated into the dash you can use voice control properly if you receive any messages you can reply to them and the stereo system in the max is obviously it's a band so it's nothing exceptional but it actually sounds all right especially for listening to podcasts even music is fine there is a little bit of bass so it will not feel like it's too lacking Recently we had a, what was it, a Ford Focus come in part exchange and that stereo sounded terrible, absolutely tinny, even though it was quite a high trim level. So yeah, this is totally fine. Also the dimensions, it's perfect on these narrow country roads. Obviously you sometimes need to let other vehicles pass, but this doesn't feel any more kind of difficult to drive than a normal passenger car. The visibility is very good. In case you do need to reverse, you've got the reversing camera and the parking sensors. So yeah, all good. I changed my charging and journey plan slightly because when I was passing the original charging stop, I still had about a third of the battery left. I'm now at services north of Bicester. Please excuse my terrible parking job. It's because I was absolutely bursting for the bathroom. But the van is happily charging. The moment I plugged in, it jumped to just over 40 kilowatts. So exactly what it's rated for. I've been plugged in for just under half an hour and it's already at 53%. Food-wise, I went for a very boring sandwich and a couple of snacks, but I still need to do a couple of emails and phone calls. So there will not be much time left because I'm barely on schedule, so I really need to try to make up some time before I hit London traffic. By the way, I specifically chose these services because you've got the old medium power grid surf units, but they've been upgraded. So they've got six of the 350 kilowatts as well, which always helps because as you can see, it's definitely busy, but there is still availability. Important, I forgot to mention the stats. I arrived with 19%. And the average consumption so far has been 29.6 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. The van is at basically 80% state of charge. The charging rate really slowed down. Have been here for 45 minutes. So that's definitely enough. Okay, last drop off complete. As you can see, the cargo bay is empty. Obviously, these tires are not for the i3. They're literally three times the size of an i3 tire. And it's before 6 p.m. So I would consider that a success. Nothing got left behind. Now I just need to head back to the office and we can look at the costs as well. And even though it's only about 11 miles away, I'm pretty sure that because this is London, it will take at least an hour and a half. Okay, I finally made it. The last bit always takes forever, so I'm glad I at least got back in reasonable time. Pulled in just as we were closing the office at 7 p.m. So let's look at the numbers now. In the usual fashion, I will put everything up on the screen. I still can't get over how efficient it is for quite a big box in winter, driven at motorway speeds for the majority of the journey. It still averaged above 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour with the cabin heater running, heated seats on, charging my phone and so on. But the true challenge was the cost and that actually came out very tight. Just a reminder, we are trying to stay under 150 pounds because that's how much it costs to ship six sets of tires by DHL. The total charging cost to cover the 220 miles was about 38 pounds. 
There are multiple ways of going about it, but basically, if the van was charged from 0 to 100%, which means 52.5 kilowatt hours at the office, that's 31 pounds 50, because unfortunately, as a business, our electricity rate is not capped, and we are on a 60p per kilowatt hour contract, which means I would have only needed to take on 9.1 kilowatt hours en route to get here with absolutely nothing in the battery. But even if we assume that all of the charging had to be done publicly because the difference is so small compared to our business rate, it really doesn't matter that much. The total electricity cost would still come out to about £43. My nourishment was £10.25. And lastly, we need to account for wear on the vehicle. We can go with a standard figure of 30p per mile, which works out to £66 for the entire 220-mile journey. Which means that the grand total is under £115. So excellent! Challenge completed, we won. Now add on to that my salary and this exercise would have been completely pointless. But we wanted to test one thing and that's how an electric compact van, relatively affordable as well, would handle a longer journey, basically a full day shift. All it needed is a single 45 minute top up, which would be the usual lunch break time anyways. What I'm trying to say is that we often focus on electrification in the context of passenger vehicles and while obviously these are a little bit more exciting than a van, it's precisely the vans which really rack up the mileage and get used day in, day out, and they literally make businesses run. So with the solution already out there, let us know what you think. Would a vehicle like this, with the range and charging capabilities of the Maxus work for you, or would you need something more? We are always keen to read your comments, and otherwise, check out the full review we have done on the Maxus if you want to learn more about it, subscribe if you want more EV content, and otherwise, as always, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.